Hi guys, welcome back. This is part two. I just uh, did part one, which was showing you how to um, get your embroidery hoop with your sweatshirt. So if you did not see that, be sure to go back and see it. And um, I decided I started this and then I wanted to go back because you couldn't really see what I was doing. So I manipulated this whole sweatshirt to get it clipped into the um, holder for the hoop. You want to make sure when you're doing this that none of your fabric is caught under your hoop. So I'm just going all the way around and double checking and everything looks good. So I have, uh, let's see, can you see that? Yes. I have my design that's still pinned on here and I want to, I know that this is where I want to have the design put. So I'm going to go um, on here and I'm going to move this down a little bit and then I'm going to check to see where exactly it's going to stitch. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. This was my makeshift um, template. And let me stick these pins in my pin cushion before I drop them on the floor, and that can be disastrous. Okay, so I have my double stabilizer on the back, and I have my hoop. This is 5x7. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a piece of um, the plastic type material, which is a wash away water stabilizer. And I'm putting this down because of the... Um, the thickness of the sweatshirt. I don't want the stitches to kind of get lost and stuck in the sweatshirt. And this design is, it's for my daughter and it's like doo-doo airport. I don't know what it is. Don't ask me something with animal crossing, <laughs> but this is what she asked for. So this is what mama's doing. So um, let's go ahead and get this uh, stitching. And we cross our fingers that everything works out, right? Woo, it's I'm sweating. Sweating bullets for this one. <clears throat> okay, so it kind of does this little circle emblem. This is the design that I purchased through Etsy. And I'm just going to get my scissors here to hold this down. I think it was $2.50. And uh, my daughter wanted one that went across the front. And I said, well, you know, I messaged the... Um, digitizer and she said this was the largest one we had it fits in a five by seven hoop so we decided to go ahead and put it on the uh, left hand side of the chest on the sweatshirt so apparently this is a thing i don't know those of you that are gamers out there you may know what animal crossing is i do not but um you know when the kids ask for something your mom you know what i'm talking about i just gave her her um embroidered towels that she wanted and she said oh i have another project for you yay <laughs> so um make sure you guys can see it's hard to um kind of figure out what is in the way there it's a lot of fabric it's a lot of lot different than um you know when i do all my other uh, embroidery things to uh, try to get a good point that y'all can see. So it's gonna stitch around. This, this is just a 10 minute stitch, so it's not bad. You know, it, it's pretty quick. And uh, fingers crossed that it all works out. So this water soluble stabilizer, I'm just gonna tear it away. And you can use uh, like a paintbrush or a Q-tip or something and go over whatever is remaining on it. Or when she goes to wash it, it'll come out in the wash and it'll be fine. So double stabilizer, double cutaway stabilizer is what I'm using. And in the hoop project, so I did put it in the hoop and the water soluble stabilizer on top to help the stitches so they don't get lost in the uh, thickness of the sweatshirt. Which is something I like to do. I don't know if you really need to do it, but I did it on the other one and it seemed to work out great using a white thread so it just calls for two different threads a white and a yellow and like I said it's a 10 minute stitch it's only 5,699 stitches so it's a quick stitch and um it's gonna make my daughter happy so I'm sure she's watching so Michelle here you go 
Mama's doing this for you. <laughs> but um, you could do a lot of a lot of fun things, um, t-shirts, things like that. I would recommend if you're going to do any type of fabric that's wearable, you know, to double or triple up on the stabilizer. And if it's wearable, make sure you use cutaway stabilizer. Don't do tear away. Um, cut away, and if you can do two, depending on the design, maybe even three layers, and um, it'll help so that when it goes in the wash, everything doesn't kind of like bunch up. You know how, um, the, when I first started doing this, I didn't know nothing about embroidery, and I didn't know you had to do all these special things. So my poor grandsons, the, the first couple, well, a lot of the couple things that Grandma did for them in the beginning, you know, my daughter washed it and ended up all like crunching up and everything. But I'm learning as I go, just like all of you. So you learn by my mistakes, and um, we'll have to see how this all works out. But um, the thing with with sweatshirts and hoodies and jackets. Um, it's hard to make sure you're putting it in the right spot and to, you know, make sure that, you know, it's going to stitch out properly and, you know, because it's kind of not like a separate piece of fabric, you know, although you could still wear it, I mean, if it doesn't work out, but definitely do a, a practice piece first just to make sure that, you know, you, you know how it's going to stitch out, you know the size of it. You know, it helps if you have it. You could cut it out like I did and, you know, actually place it on the, the fabric so you know exactly where it's going to stitch. And it helps you a lot when you're doing the hooping. So anyhow, today is Monday, January 24th, 2022. And uh, depending on when you're watching this, because um, a lot of my videos, you know, from years back, people are still watching. And um, I really do appreciate that. So if you like this, you want to see more, be sure to leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Sharing is caring, so be sure to share this with everyone. And uh, let me know. What do you think? Have you ever done this? Is there something you think you want to take a gander at? And uh, let me know what you think. And do you know what this doo-doo airport is? Because <laughs> I sure as heck don't. But, um... Anyhow, I would love it also if you would subscribe. It's absolutely free, and um, I'm working toward 5,000 subscribers. And uh, I think at 5,000, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So you want to make sure that you are subscribed, and you come back often, so you don't miss out on the surprise giveaway when it's going to be. I don't know. We will see. Depends on how long it takes me to get to 5K, right? But my channel has been growing and I'm super excited about the whole thing. I just kind of started this channel out just with uh, stamping and it kind of got into unboxings and then it got into uh, some sewing and then embroidery and uh, who knew? Now majority of the people that watch this watch for the machine embroidery and I didn't know there was such a big calling for it but I'm glad that I can help out I am by no means an expert I'm a beginner just like all of you and just kind of sharing as I go along what I've learned and projects I'm working on and I do get requests a lot for different types of projects so if there's something in particular you know that you would be interested in seeing um, I'm all for learning more things more techniques more projects I usually have some sort of project always going at one time and um, I really do enjoy machine embroidery I never thought you know when I started off with my small little 4x4 hoop that here I'd be how many machines later and still loving it oh I don't know what I've been doing it maybe now two years two no longer than that uh, maybe four years five years I don't know I've lost lots track but um, it's just been a lot of fun so if you're thinking of getting into machine embroidery just want to let you know it's not a cheap hobby but you can start off by checking out marketplace online see if you can maybe pick up a secondhand machine you know keep within your budget uh, you know don't break the bank with your hobby 
but um, give it a try, you know. Um, I didn't know if I was going to really love it as much as I did. Like, who knows when you start off a new hobby, right? So I started with just a couple hundred dollar machine. And uh, then if you decide that you want to go a little bigger, then you could trade that machine in, go to a reputable dealer. They'll take trade-ins and you can trade in that machine to an up, you know, upper model. A lot of times different um, dealers will have trade-in machines that you can buy a second-hand machine. You know, that would definitely be the route to go. When you go on Marketplace, if you don't really know what you're getting or, you know, people maybe you don't know if they took care of it or serviced it on a regular basis, you know, your best bet might be to go to a dealer. I live in northeastern Pennsylvania. The closest brother dealer from me is in East Stroudsburg, which is about an hour away, one way. And it's Pocono Sovac. I highly recommend them. If you go there, ask for Fred. Tell him that Stamp and Soup Create sent you. They're very nice people. Um, they are very helpful. And um, I'm very pleased with them as far as with service and everything else. So definitely give them a shout, shout out and um, go online they have an online store but your best bet when you're just starting off or you know if you want to see what all is available you know go into the showroom they have a lot of machines to pick from not just brother they have many different ones and who knows you know maybe there's one out there that you know is just the perfect one for you so i would highly recommend them so anyhow, how was my day? Well, it was a typical Monday at work. What can I say? Um, they're calling for some snow tonight. Woke up this morning, we had a dusting of snow. Nothing major, just enough that I had to use my broom and kind of swoosh it away. And uh, they're calling for the same thing tonight. I don't mind these little tiny snowstorms. Well, they're not even a storm. It's just kind of like dustings to an inch. Um, but now they're talking about some sort of big storm for the upcoming weekend who knows I don't know I think I'm planning on painting my bathroom this weekend so I don't really care what it does out there um, I have this paint that my daughter gave me and I keep looking at my bathroom thinking that it really needs it and um, I'm not a painter I'm a crafter painter but not a painter of walls so I'm going to start prepping um, maybe tomorrow night. Tonight I thought I was going to start, but I got involved in this and I'm like, yeah, well, let me just do this and um, I could start tomorrow after my Facebook Live. But um, anyhow, um, I have to clean the walls and uh, do some patching, taking some of the things down and, you know, all that prep work that you have to do before you paint. But I'm kind of excited about it. So my bathroom's not real big, it's small. So I thought for my first painting alone project, that might be a good thing. Okay, so we're almost done with the airline word. And I don't know, I wish the airline word had a little bit more substance to it because it's kind of very faint. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and change our thread now. Go ahead and put in the yellow thread and the yellow thread is only a minute stitch I decided to do this bright yellow as opposed to um, my sample where the yellow I chose was kind of more goldy but because this is like a royal blue um, I thought it would stand out a little more and pardon me if I'm in your way oh and I just cut my thread <laughs> I have to okay hold on Go up there and around there. Thread the needle. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so it's going to do on the little feet, the beak, and then a little line under doo doo or dodo, doo doo. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. When I was looking up for the design, I asked the one girl that I work with, and she's a younger girl. I said, do you know what this is? She goes, uh, no. So she apparently isn't a gamer either. Not that my daughter's a big gamer, but I guess this Animal Crossing is a thing. Okay, so 
was gonna do the, is that a beak? Is that what you call it? I don't know, is that a duck, a chicken? I don't know what it is. I was gonna do that. I think that's gonna look good on the, the bright colored. And then there's like a little line in between the two words. And then we're gonna be done with this. And then I can continue on. I had a request for the um, the one table runner I did. I showed a picture of it. It was a Christmas one. It's a Celebrations. It's a sweet pea design. So I think her name's Janice. She's uh, across the pond, I believe in Australia. She messages me all the time and she said, do you think you could do a video on, on how that's all done? So I think that's going to be my next um, video venture. Oh, there we go. We are done. Let me trim this piece of thread that's driving me nuts. Okay, so finish sewing. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and remove this. Now looking for these little jump stitches that are here. I want to snip them before I remove the plastic. And I'm not sure if I got them all. It's hard to see. There's another one right here. Okay, well, I'll get them when I'm done. Okay, so this is a water-soluble stabilizer. And as you can see, you can just kind of tear it away. And there's some still remaining on here. So, like I said, you can go with a Q-tip or something like that to get out all these little small areas. And get that out of there. And these little jump stitches... I'm going to go in and trim those. And it's hard because the stabilizer is in there too. So, all right. There's one here. Okay. My machine does cut the stitches, but when they're, um, you know, that close like this, these are, it kind of doesn't do them. So. All right, so in this little bit here, a, I'm just going to use a Q-tip for that. So let me get this out of these close quarters. Like I said, we got this big hood on here. A little thick underneath there. All right. So um, there it is. Let me turn you a little bit here. So I can show you and so now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and unscrew the hoop take that off on the back on the front I don't want that to fall on the floor and let's see what we got here let me hold it up so I can look at it first so I think it's cute. All right, so there's our design. And what you want to do is, like I said, we'll clean all that up. I'll get myself a wet Q-tip and um, get rid of all that extra. And when you turn it inside out, you have all this stabilizer. And all you're gonna do with this is you're just going to pull it away. Cause don't forget, we used our, um, our um, spray adhesive on there. And then I'm going to take this over to the table and I'm just going to trim around, you know, all of this area, all this excess and that rest, the rest stays there. But you can see the back, how nice and neat it is. And then, uh, then you're good to go. Good for giving. And I think it came out really cute. I think she'll like it. So there is everything stuck to it because of the stabilizer so there is our um in the hoop sweatshirt design that um i showed you how to hoop it this is kind of like when you have a sunburn you know and you want to peel the skin <laughs> i know that's kind of gross but you know you do it and you just kind of want to peel that away because you just just feel like you have to right so anyhow i'll work on that but um anyhow if you have any questions be sure to let me know 
Um, this is a really fun project to do. You can do many different types of uh, sweatshirts, t-shirts, uh, polo shirts, all sorts of things, uh, bathrobes, you name it. You can monogram things. It's it's a lot of fun, it makes a great gift. You can take something that was very inexpensive and personalize it and make it something special. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a terrific day. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. If you click on all, then you'll receive notifications when I upload new videos. And you're not going to want to miss any of them. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.